Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about agency bonds. Now, these bonds actually have even higher yields than the treasuries that many of us have been so interested in recently. Obviously, there are some drawbacks that come with those higher yields, but this is a topic that has been sprinkled in the comments section of our channel over the last couple months, so we figured we would finally address it and show you and talk a little bit about agency bonds. Now, like I said, these bonds have significantly higher rates than things such as US Treasuries. Looking at this row with the Treasuries, for example, in the 20 year, it sits just under 5%. But if we compare that to agency bonds, which is this government agencies row, you can see that it's paying almost 6.3% yearly. This is a rate that's even higher than a rated corporate bonds these are super high risk corporate bonds and even those are only paying 6.13 percent so these government agency bonds are certainly something that we should be looking into now with agency bonds there's two main types that we're going to need to remember the first one being federal government agency bonds and the second one being gse bonds this stands for government sponsored enterprise bonds and we're going to talk about the two and their differences now the biggest difference really is the security that comes between the two the federal government agency bonds are more directly from the federal government and its agencies meaning that it's backed with full faith and credit of the u.s government these are a little bit more secure granted they are not quite as secure as treasury bills or treasury bonds so that is something to keep in mind the real reason that they're not as secure, particularly with their higher rates, is the fact that they're callable, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But first, let's talk about the GSE bonds and what exactly they are. Now, these are inherently a little bit riskier. Obviously, at the end of the day, we're talking about pretty low-risk bonds. Chances are none of these are going to default but the GSE bonds come with a higher default than the actual government federal agency bonds. These come from other associations that are obviously sponsored by the federal government, but aren't exactly the federal government themselves, meaning that they have some kind of backing from the US government, but are not quite as guaranteed. The default risk is a little bit higher, but some of these do actually have some advantages and we'll talk about that when we talk about taxability. Before we talk about the difference in the taxability of those two types of bonds, let's go ahead and cover what exactly it means that these bonds are callable. Now, the idea behind this is that, let's say we buy a 20-year agency bond. This means that for the next 20 years, our money is locked up and we're gonna be getting paid the interest rate that was agreed upon. Now, the only real difference with callable bonds is the fact that they at any time can decide that they're done and they're going to pay you back early with your principal along with any interest that has been accrued. And after that point, their basically sale of the bond to you is over and you won't be getting any more interest payments. Obviously, though, you cannot decide to end your end of the deal early. Now, particularly with these agency bonds, with them having such high rates right now at over 6%, they are likely to be called at some point. And this is probably going to happen as interest rates begin to fall, then these companies or these agencies are going to call these bonds. You can see that the U.S. Fed Fund's interest rate right now sits at 5.5%. It's been there for a while since around July of last year, but obviously we hope at least one day this interest rate is going to go back down, and at that time, these bonds will likely be called. Now, depending on the type of bond and the actual specific issuer, there's different sort of rules or regulations with when they're allowed to call the bond, but almost all agency bonds do have this option that makes them callable. Now, here's a more in-depth look at the different issuers with the government agency bonds, as well as your GSEs, 
And let's talk a little bit about the difference in taxability between the two of them. Any government agency bonds that you purchase are going to be susceptible to both state and local as well as federal income tax. Now, many GSEs are also going to be required to be paid both federal and state and local income tax. But I know that at least the farm credit banks and the federal home loan banks, GSEs, are not taxable at the state and local level. Now, obviously, if you're from somewhere like Washington or Tennessee or Texas that doesn't have state or local income tax, this isn't a huge deal. This isn't something you should be thinking about. But if you're from, say, California or New York, one of those states with higher level state income taxes, that percentage can make a big difference if you're talking about large sums of money. Finally, let's talk about fees that are associated with buying these agency bonds on the secondary market as well as buying new issue bonds directly from your broker. From what I understand, this is not something that can be purchased on Treasury Direct. Rather, you're going to have to purchase this either directly from the issuer or on the secondary market. There are fees associated with this, however, if you're going to buy it on the secondary market. You can see that for new issues, if you're buying it directly from the agency that's issuing it, there's no fees associated. However, if you're wanting to buy it on the secondary market, there is a fee of $1 per bond. And in this case, many of them are sold in increments of a thousand, meaning you're only paying a fee of $1 on a $1,000 purchase. So it's really not a super big deal, but it is something to be aware of. And the final thing that we'll talk about today with these agency bonds is actually the minimum purchase amount. This varies pretty greatly between the different types of bonds, but just to give you sort of an idea, they can be as low as $1,000 when we're talking about something like an FHL. However, with things like the Ginny May bonds, there is a minimum purchase amount of 25,000. This is certainly something to keep in mind, especially with the fact that the larger rates are going to come with larger periods of time. Obviously, like I said, I can almost guarantee you that these are going to get called at some point. However, you would be locking up $25,000 in a bond with no real way to get it out besides selling it on the secondary market. Now, these bonds are generally pretty liquid on the secondary market. However, compared to something like U.S. Treasuries, their liquidity is certainly much lower. I hope you did go on to enjoy today's video and learn something new. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Leave a like while you're down there and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos like this one. But other than that, we'll see you in the next one.